Hello, and welcome to another Website Depot podcast. As ever, I'm your host, Greg Benevent, and I'm once again lucky to be joined by Veronica from Scope Environmental. How are you doing, Veronica? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. So yeah, so I know we talked a little bit about uh, what was coming up in the, uh, the pre-talk there, but I'd love to have you introduce for the uh, listeners and watchers at home exactly what you came here to discuss today. I'm going to be giving you some information on how to do your homework for your property insurance policy. I am not an insurance agent. I'm not an insurance broker. I do not work for the insurance industry in any way. I haven't been certified in any way. The information I'm going to be sharing with you today is derived from our experience in working with the insurance industry, our experience Mm -hmm. in working with policyholders, and their experiences in working with insurance companies. So Uh, this is what we've learned over the years and Mm. the mishaps and better parts that we've seen. So I'd like to share it with your viewers so that they too know how to read their insurance policy and how Mm. to understand it and how to know what it is they're buying and why. Oh, geez, absolutely. Yes, I know. I personally never look enough at the insurance policy. So yeah, so like what, you know, where uh, uh, where would you start with that? I mean, is it a question of like, hey, should I even have insurance? necessarily. Right. Like, right. So it's important to know that people usually buy insurance for three different reasons. If they're mm-hmm. a renter, their uh, landlord might be requiring that they have a policy in order to rent or lease a specific unit. If they are purchasing a property or have a mortgage on a property, their lender will require that they have a property mm-hmm. insurance policy. Mm-hmm. And then there's people that may have a property that is paid off They own it free and clear, and they wonder that now that they do have their property paid off, should they even bother with insurance? They may never have had a uh, hazardous or an emergency property situation in their home. So they Mm. said, after all these years of never having used this policy that I paid for, do I really need one? So those are the questions that I'd like to answer for people today so that they can decide for themselves if they're going to have one as a requirement what they should know about it. And if they don't have to have one as a part of a requirement, why they should or should not have one, basically. Gotcha. What they should know about an insurance policy that'll help them make the decision on whether to purchase one if they're not required to. I mean, wh- where do you start with something like that? Is it is it is it a question of knowing if your policy is up to date or what you need or, or where would where would you even begin? So the first thing you need to know is if you already have an insurance policy, whether a renter's policy or you have one for your property that you own, you should find out if your property is up to date. Uh, Once a year, your insurance broker will call you and ask you to review your policy. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't really (laughs) care. Just make sure that it covers me and the lender doesn't say anything or Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. landlord doesn't say anything. That can be completely unintentional, but totally irresponsible of anyone who lives in a property as an adult. And here's why. You want to make sure you have enough coverage. If you don't Mm. keep your policy up to date, it may no longer cover your dwelling. So I've seen situations where um, usually with older people that own property, they'll have an insurance policy. But for the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, they've just paid for it. And they've never answered that call of the insurance broker trying to update their policy. Um, What's happened over the years is their property has gone up in value, but the mm. replacement value of approval on their policy remains where it was the last time they updated the policy. Oh, so if, they're, if they do have an emergency situation, if there's a fire, if there is a water loss, it'll only cover them up to the amounts that were listed on their last policy, which may no longer be enough for 10, 15, 20 years down the right. line, even five years down the line. The real estate market, as we know, in Southern California, where we are, fluctuates. Mm-hmm. You know, you there was oh, a time man. where things were down and then things went way up. And if you never and if you never checked through your policy, then it still covers you for the old property value. And God forbid there's a fire and the whole thing is lost. You will not get the new replacement value of your home. So for 
the first reason, make sure your policy is up to date so that it can in fact reflect the current value of your home for replacement purposes. Oh, Not well, just the nice. entire home, but also the structure as a whole, you know, walls, mm. floors, whatever is inside a property, making sure gotcha. that those things are able to be replaced in case of an emergency. That just anyone, even well-meaning people could absolutely fall into the yeah. idea of, you know, just, just you could even be the most conscientious kind of homeowner would just be like, oh, okay, it's my insurance policy. I've been paying it. So yeah. naturally it should yeah. be uh, matching what I'm doing now. Yeah, and that's what we hear a lot of, which brings mm. me to my next point is understanding the different parts of your policy, ah. of your insurance policy, so that you know exactly what it is you are paying for and how mm. much coverage you okay. have for each one. Right. So for a renter, some of these may not be as applicable. They're mostly for homeowners. Mm. There are a couple of sections in here that are applicable to renters. First and foremost, as I mentioned in the previous part, is the structure and dwelling portion. This is is the part that covers the actual structure of your property for both emergency services and any subsequent repairs. For example, when there's a water damage claim or a situation inside a home, we come in, we remove affected materials, drywall, flooring, insulation, what have you. That's the emergency portion of it. That's the cleanup and drying of everything out. The second part is building it all back, putting it all back the way that it was. That's the repair portion of the policy. So both of those fall into the structure and dwelling. Again, mm -hmm. this is why it's very important to keep the policy up to date so mm -hmm. that the policy reflects the current value of what those things are and can in fact pay for them to be replaced. Uh, okay, so you're saying should someone not keep up with that policy, disaster could strike, scope goes in to fix it and all that, and it turns out that the repair and or the remediation would not be covered by a policy that was not updated? Not necessarily not covered. There just may mm. not be enough money to cover uh, it because the monies are based on what things used to cost the last time you updated your policy. Geez. Okay. So if wow. prices on materials and other things have gone up, you may not have enough coverage. You'll have oh, some coverage. Okay. I had a situation where a policyholder had about $25,000 in coverage for mm -hmm. everything they needed to do with the home. Mm -hmm. They had a large water damage claim that flooded the entire first floor of the home. And as you can imagine, $25,000 will not cover that. <laughs> it will not yeah. cover all the floors. It will not cover oh, the walls. Geez. It will not cover the cabinets. And then the homeowner is stuck in a situation where the insurance company will write out the check for $25,000 thousand dollars and they sit down and look at it and they don't know what to do with it where to spend it first and right. what they're going to live with not having had enough coverage yeah that 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 is a truly awful scenario that no this, this all makes a lot of sense the next part is what you want to be aware of is the contents inside your property mm. so okay. it's anything and everything that's not the structure Meaning this is your furniture, this is your plates, this is your clothing, this is mm -hmm. knickknacks, this is everything that you've purchased and put inside your home. Okay. A lot of people don't realize that over many years, they acquire things. We all acquire <laughs> things, whether they be bedding or furniture or mm -hmm. um, for shelves or plates or knickknacks or picture frames or anything. Yeah. Pictures hanging on the walls, televisions, whatever. You've yeah. acquired many things, no matter how small your space may, small or large, your space <laughs> may be. You, some people may consider themselves minimalists, but trust me, that's, that's, a, that's a very... <laughs> <laughs> That's a very small category of people. Uh, so most bet. people have acquired oh, a ton of things. Mm -hmm. What you want to watch out for or be aware of rather is mm -hmm. the contents coverage for your policy. Mm -hmm. So on your policy, there is mm -hmm. a section of monies that are allocated for your contents. Again, okay. I had a, I had a, I've had experiences where people have mm -hmm. completely neglected this portion of their policy and thought, oh, well, I don't know, maybe I have $10,000 worth of things in here. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a lot of money. However, it's not just a matter of the things that are there. It's a matter of cleaning them, 
inventorying them, storing them, and possibly having to replace them. So $10,000 okay. is not going to cover it. Chances mm -hmm. are that if you have a three bedroom home or something like that, $20,000 isn't going to cover it. You're going mm -hmm. to need more. That is something that you should discuss with your insurance agent or broker, and mm -hmm. they will advise you on how much would be enough. They'll discuss that with you. You'll explain how many bedrooms, how many, whatever you have in your home, how many rooms you have in general, and they can suggest how much you should have. One other point I'd like to bring up, Please. along with keeping your policy up to date, sometimes we think that the insurance brokers may be giving us a call because they want it updated because they're going to make more money on this. Mm -hmm. And it's true, I believe there might be some sort of a commission structure on that. However, mm -hmm. they are doing you a service that you definitely want. <laughs> to making sure that you have enough coverage in case sure. disaster strikes. You hope it never does, but mm -hmm. you need enough coverage. Do you have any no, questions I, about that part? I, I, I was I was just thinking about it. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if it's necessarily a question I had so much. It was just a consideration of the full scope of what all that would entail, I guess. On some level, I personally had had for and maybe this is just, just me. I'd never assumed that the contents part of it had been nearly quite as encompassing as you laid it out to be. Like I never would have assumed that knickknacks and bedding, maybe, but not you know clothing or picture frames or all the wonderful examples you gave would also be uh, covered under the policy of content. But from what you're saying, but it almost seems like that's a good deal. I mean, obviously you're not selling insurance. You're not here to give people <laughs> advice for how to do their insurance that's if you're sitting there listening watching this thing hey and you haven't had this conversation with your insurance agent or your broker or whoever this is a conversation worth having the longer Absolutely. it's been since you did it uh maybe the sooner you should have it and definitely there are other parts you should also be considering such as additional mm -hmm. living expenses Oh. Similar to the contents, if a disaster uh -huh. were to strike and you had to move out of your home, your mm -hmm. contents would be inventory packed up and moved out oh. stored elsewhere. That contents oh. portion would also have to cover the storage of your items for the duration until you're able to move back. These things, depending on the scope of the claim, can take anywhere from two months, they can take six months, they can take a year. And mm -hmm. so your contents are being stored elsewhere. Oh. Also, if let's say, your kitchen is affected. You cannot live in the home if your kitchen is affected. You need to be able to eat. Or if your floors are removed, you cannot right. live in a home where there's no floors in the common areas. You know, yeah, nobody's walking on concrete. So with that being said, the next portion of your policy, which is your additional living expenses mm -hmm. called ALE, okay. you should review this portion of the policy with your insurance broker or agent mm -hmm. to make sure that it covers enough for you to be able to rent a full furnished home of similar size in a similar in a in a not too large of a radius away from your own home so in a in your neighborhood you know okay. within a few miles or so because what you don't want is oh sure we can rent a three-bedroom home over there okay. but that changes your commute that changes the schools for your children that oh, changes man. how far you are from your parents or anything else other activities you do going to the gym or what mm -hmm. have you anything but you want to be able to rent it in a reasonable radius away from your own home to make sure that you can still keep life as normal as possible while all of right. this is happening in your house or in mm. your residence. No, that makes so much sense. I mean, the idea is that by having this insurance, it feels like in a very real way, it's keeping this, you know, some kind of disaster from, I hate to almost use this as a pun, but seeping into every other aspect of your life. It's it's almost like, for lack of a better phrase, an insurance for your way of life, day-to-day -day yeah. life kind of thing. It covers so much more than just your property insurance. People think that it's just the house, but mm -hmm. it's so much more because this is where you spend your time. This is where you go right. home after work. This is, this is where you're life is and your children's mm -hmm. life, your pets, everything else. And so this is where your comfort is. So you want to make sure that when you are reviewing your policy with your agent or broker, that you are considering how much fully furnished rental properties are going for in your neighborhood. And you want to make sure that you have coverage for six months to a year, I would say a year, but at the very least six months of coverage mm -hmm. enough for that. Additional living expenses is also a situation where if the insurance company does not, or if you choose to move to a hotel because it's a more shorter term concern, they okay. will pay for the hotel and possibly oh, food wow. like takeout and things like that. So that's where that's covered also. 
obviously everyone's situation is different and you never know when things are going to strike, et cetera, et cetera. But like, is there anything even like approaching a good rule of thumb as to how often you should maybe look at this insurance policy? Is it every couple years, every year, every three or four years? It should years? be yearly, especially mm. because over the course of a year, we may acquire new things, new right. art, new furniture. Over the course of a year, our family may grow or, right. you know, kids may move out. And so mm. you may or may not need a three bedroom house. You may need a two bedroom right. house, or maybe now you need a four bedroom house in order to accommodate for your family. Maybe uh, okay. another a family member moves in with you indefinitely. And so this is something that you do want to review on a yearly basis. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, you know, yearly at the very least, or otherwise, it almost sounds like either in anticipation of or reaction to a life change. Uh, someone moving in and out, changes, that kind of thing. Okay, no, that, that makes so much sense, Veronica. So for renters, the mm -hmm. what's important is the contents and the additional living expense because whoever the owner is, whoever the landlord is of the property that you're living in, they mm -hmm. most likely carry the insurance for the dwelling itself. Ah, okay. What they won't, what their insurance will not cover is your contents inside your unit. Right. Their insurance yeah. will also not cover you moving out because it's not them living inside that property. You're a renter. Right. So for your renter's policy, these two sections are very important for you. The contents is what you came in with and will probably leave with if you ever intend to leave the unit. The additional living expenses in case there is a problem inside the unit, there is a flood, a fire, any type of situation, you want to make sure that you have the coverage you need to rent a similar unit that is hopefully furnished so that you don't have to drag your own furniture to it. Certainly. I love what you said because it felt like, for lack of a better phrase, it was you were establishing a minimum. I mean, I know so many renters that are just like, okay, if I have to get this insurance, I'm getting the bare minimum, period. But what you're saying is a redefinition of that bare minimum. It should be the bare minimum so that you can live in this other place, that you aren't dragging your furniture through the street in the backseat of your car, that kind of thing. There's one other part. I'm sure there's other parts that in the insurance policy that your broker can review with you. One other section that I find of interest and importance is mold coverage. Mm. Most new policies no longer offer mold coverage at all. Carriers oh, do not sell mold coverage, most of them. However, mm -hmm. there are older policies that hold mold coverage. They still okay. have that section in there. So maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, you purchased the policy and now the mold coverage is grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. You want to look that up and find out what the limits of that are mm -hmm. in case you do run into a situation where you have to use that portion of the policy. I see. Okay. But another hope for the best, expect the worst kind of thing. That's kind of the nature of insurance in general is we mm -hmm. all hope we never have to use it, but we do buy health insurance, car insurance, property oh, insurance. Yeah. There's all these different types of insurances that we buy. We mm -hmm. really should be more familiar with what it is we bought. You know, if you were to buy a car, you'd like to know how the features inside that car were work. You're going yes. to buy insurance for a property that is worth, you know, 500 and up thousands of dollars. You should know how that works in case something does happen. You should find out how all the features work inside. Certainly. And, I, and I, I'm just thinking about what you said. And I, you know, thinking of my own life where I'm like, ah, you know, I don't want to look at these things. I don't want to have to think about it. But just in having these conversations, it hits me that like, you know, it, it, it there's something so much more positive in looking at it and at least knowing versus uh, uh, the potentiality of, you know, getting gobsmacked by it at some future point in the midst of a disaster. Yeah, yeah. And it's for, like you say, for lack of a better phrase, it's adulting. You know, you we all have to be adults. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes, we, we come home after work and we're like, we've done our responsibility things for the day. But, you mm. know, on the weekends, we have to do chores. We have to clean the house. We should look Certainly. at our insurance policy and understand what it means and what's inside of it. No, I like the way you put that. It's just one more chore, one more, you know, thing that the uh, foundation for day to day living. That makes so much sense. The next part is what are the limits you should have? They're called mm -hmm. limits. 
for these parts of your policy. Okay. For the structure and dwelling portion, they should match the current value of your home. Mm. Your insurance broker will go over that with you, but there is a land value and a property value. So if you buy a property for a million dollars, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need a million dollars in coverage. The insurance mm. will assess the value of the actual structure based on that. And that's what they will assign as the replacement value for the structure. That's okay. what your emergency services and your repairs will come into play for. And the next one, as we discussed, was contents. The limits for your contents, depending on how many bedrooms you have, I would recommend if it's a one bedroom apartment, possibly I'd say 15 to $20,000 might be enough. Okay. Beyond that, I think you should really discuss it with your insurance broker because they have the tools to calculate if you have two bedrooms, if you have three bedrooms, if you have uh, multiple living areas, if you have a very large kitchen, if you have an outside area, because your outside contents are also contents, like your pool furniture, right. your outdoor furniture. In my experience during the fires specifically, there were not just damages to their interior structure and contents, there were damages to their exterior as well. Like their mm. pools needed to be re-cleaned because of all the ash inside of it. Their mm. furniture outside may have been damaged depending on how close the fire came or it possibly mm. just needs to be cleaned. But it's not mm. something that they want to do as to why they file the claim, of course. So right. the professionals that are going to come in to do that cleaning, basically that portion of the policy, the contents portion of the policy is what we'll be paying for those services, cleaning services, all of that, that will be paid for by that portion. Mm -hmm. Cleaning your furniture, cleaning your pictures, hanging on the walls, all of those things will be a part of the contents cleaning of your property. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, the additional living expenses. What I've seen in different policies that we've been servicing for homeowners, mm -hmm. sometimes they're unlimited. Sometimes okay. people have $50,000. Sometimes people have $100,000. Sometimes people have more than that. Thing that you should discuss with your broker based mm. on what fully furnished properties of similar size cost to rent per month in your area. Okay. So you can look up Airbnbs and VRBOs and things like that and find out what do they cost per month. You'll be pretty surprised to see that it's actually quite a bit of money. It's like hotel rates in certain cases, depending on oh, where geez. people live. And so that's thousands and thousands of dollars per month. So you'll, mm -hmm. you'll need to consider that. Mm -hmm. And the mold coverage, if you do have it, unfortunately, at this point, there is no way to make it more. I would definitely not make it less if you have it, because it's kind of <laughs> unicorn nowadays to even have old coverage in your policy. The last thing you should consider is your luxury goods. Mm. Different carriers, sometimes they'll include it with your regular policy. Other times you have to buy a separate policy for it. You should check with your insurance on that with your carrier. Mm. But what you want to make sure is that your luxury goods, such as expensive art and jewelry and things of that nature, have coverage as well. Because it's not just a matter of theft. It's also a matter of damage in the case of a fire or a flood oh, or anything else like right. that. So they may yeah. be in a drawer, but what if where that drawer is, is flooded? You know what I mean? Mm. True. They're probably, if they're jewelry, they're metal, they're probably fine. But what if they're damaged in some way as a result mm. of that? And you have to have that. Certainly. Okay. That makes so much sense. The idea of even mentally reframing the idea of insurance, not, you know, what's the least I can pay and get by, but rather what's, what can I pay and continue my life? as should things occur. Which definitely brings me to my next point is deciding on how high you're going to make those limits versus mm. how that's going to affect your premium per month. So many people I know are always after the cheapest policy. They're like, oh, right. I just need to buy something. I need to buy something. If a disaster strikes and they don't have enough coverage, then what was the point? What was the point of just buying anything? You right. paid all this money into something that isn't going to help you enough. So right. true, we all need to weigh out our budgets and everything else. Do consider how increasing the limits will affect your premium and how that will affect your regular budget. And that's something that we all have to balance out with. A hundred percent. No, that, that makes so much sense. You summed it all up very well. I think, I think that's all... I would say on that topic, I'm happy to answer any questions. If any of your viewers feel like reaching out, emailing us, asking us for help to see if we can 
look at their policy with them. Again, we're not insurance experts, we're not brokers, we're not agents, we're not any of those things. Don't have any certifications in the insurance world. We do have lots of experience in working with insurance companies and working with homeowners and resolving property disasters, hazardous disasters. So we'll be happy to help. That is great. That, I mean, I, I I know I say this every time, but I, I sincerely mean it here as well. I, I truly learned a lot today, Veronica. That was, <laughs> Thank that was you. Really now I feel like I got to go look at my own policy here in my apartment. No <laughs> idea. Um, all right. Well, once again, uh, on behalf of uh, Website Depot, as ever, my name's uh, Greg Benevent. Take it easy. Have a good night. Bye.